Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today we're going to talk about thymosin alpha-1, what it is, how it works, and why some doctors are using it to help those with Lyme disease. So let's sort of start with the basics. What exactly is thymosin alpha-1? Now, I know we've talked about thymosin alpha-1 before in the context of immune health, but as a quick refresher, thymosin alpha-1 is a peptide. It occurs naturally in the body. It was first isolated from the thymus gland, which is a really important immune organ responsible for developing and regulating our T cells, especially during childhood. Now you may ask, what are T cells? T cells are simply just a type of white blood cell that play a central role in the immune system by identifying and destroying infected or abnormal cells and then coordinating immune responses. Over time, our thymus shrinks and our immune responses tend to slow down, which may partly explain why chronic infections or even immune dysregulation become more common with aging. Thymosin alpha-1 acts sort of like an immune system coach. It doesn't directly kill pathogens, but it enhances the immune system's ability to detect and fight infections. In fact, it's made a really big impact around the world. Since its early discovery in the 1970s, it's been used in over 35 countries to help treat conditions like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, certain cancers, and even sepsis. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, researchers explored its potential to calm immune overreactions and improve patient outcomes. It's also even popular in veterinary medicine for helping dogs with chronic infections. Plus, some doctors now are investigating its role in boosting vaccine effectiveness and supporting people with autoimmune diseases or age-related immune decline, making thymosin alpha-1 a real immune multitasker. So why are doctors using thymosin alpha-1 in Lyme disease? Well, for many people, Lyme disease can become a long, drawn-out illness. And while antibiotics are usually the first-line treatment, some patients just simply don't recover fully. Instead, they develop lingering symptoms like fatigue, brain fog, joint pain, or neurological issues. This condition is known as post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, or PTLDS. And we'll dive deeper into that in just a minute. In Lyme patients, thymosin alpha-1 is being used off-label to either rebalance the immune system, enhance the activity of T-cells and natural killer cells, calm overactive inflammation, and even reduce the intensity and frequency of flare-ups or immune system crashes. Doctors are reporting that patients with thymosin alpha-1 often feel more resilient with improved energy, more mental clarity, and fewer immune complications, especially in cases involving co-infections like Babesia, Bartonella, or Epstein-Barr virus. What exactly is PTLDS? Now, let's dig into what happens after Lyme disease treatment for some patients. PTLDS affects roughly 5 to 20% of people who have been treated for Lyme disease with antibiotics. Even after completing a full course of these antibiotics, they continue to experience significant symptoms that can last for months or even years. Some of the most common symptoms of PTLDS include chronic fatigue that doesn't improve with rest, brain fog, poor memory, or even difficulty concentrating. Sometimes people refer to it as Lyme brain. People also experience joint and muscle pain, sleep disturbances, even numbness, tingling, or burning sensations, which is also known as peripheral neuropathy. And there's other people who report things like depression, anxiety, or mood swings, even sensitivity to light, sounds, or smells, dizziness or balance issues, and often fluctuating or cyclical symptoms where you feel better for a while, but then suddenly crash and don't feel well at all. These symptoms can truly be disabling and debilitating. They're often not reflected in standard lab tests, which makes a lot of patients feel dismissed or even misdiagnosed. Why does this PTLDS happen? Now, researchers are still working to truly understand why PTLDS happens, but here are some of the leading theories. The first thing I want to talk about is immune system dysregulation. What is thought to be happening is, is that the infection may trigger some sort of chronic inflammatory state that lingers long after the bacteria are gone after finishing a round of antibiotics. Other things that may be happening are that some believe bacteria can go into what we call a lower metabolic or dor dormant state. And so in this sort of kind of limbo period, these bacteria are able to evade antibiotics and then reactivate later, causing all of these side effects. 
Another thing that may be happening is that nerve and joint tissues may have been injured and just take a longer time to heal. Or maybe the body may start attacking its own tissues after you have this Lyme infection, kind of similar to what happens after getting rheumatic fever. Some people think that other pathogens like Bartonella or Babesia may still be active and really complicate that recovery. This is where thymosin alpha-1 may offer a new path, not as a cure, but as a modulator that can help restore immune balance and reduce this sort of inflammatory damage that's going on. The next thing I want to talk about is sort of risk factors and who should avoid it. So thymosin alpha-1 is generally considered safe and well-tolerated, especially because it mimics a peptide your body already makes. But like all therapies, it's really not for everyone. Possible side effects may include mild injection site reactions like redness, bruising, swelling at the injection site, or things like fatigue, nausea, or headache. But these things usually occur early along in treatment and get better as you use thymosin alpha-1 more often. Now, also keep in mind that not everyone is a good candidate, like we mentioned, for thymosin alpha-1. So it's important to know who who should be cautious, so to speak. So for starters, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, it's best to avoid it. There just isn't really enough safety data available yet. And then people taking immunosuppressant medications, like those who've had organ transplants, should also steer clear because thymosin alpha-1 actually stimulates the immune system and in theory could interfere with those medications that you need to take. And if you have autoimmune conditions, it's a bit of a gray area. So while some people tolerate it well with low, carefully monitored doses, others might experience a flare. So it's definitely something to discuss with a knowledgeable healthcare provider. And as always, it's just best to consult you know, a healthcare provider that's experienced in peptide therapies and Lyme diseases before even starting this treatment if you're using it in the context of Lyme disease. So to sum it all up, thymosin alpha-1 is really a promising immune supporting peptide that's gaining a lot of attention in the world of chronic illness, especially for conditions like Lyme disease and PTLDS. It's really not a replacement for antibiotics and it doesn't necessarily kill infections, but it may help bring balance to an immune system that's either overreacting or underperforming. It's also being used to calm inflammation and support that healing and help people feel just more resilient as they work through these long-term symptoms. So if you are a loved one or struggling with lingering symptoms from Lyme disease or have chronic fatigue or an immune system that just won't seem to sort of bounce back, really just know that you're not alone. You'll want to talk to your family physician and ask them if they can steer you toward a specialist that is familiar with peptide therapy or even Lyme disease. And maybe you'll end up on thymosin alpha one. Thanks again for listening to the peptide podcast. If you enjoyed the show and you really want to support what we do, head on over to our partners page. You'll find some pretty amazing brands that we trust. And by checking them out, you're helping us keep the podcast going until next time. Be well, be patient. And as always have a happy, healthy week.